I was yelling at kids. Wipe the so floor with everybody. We had a lot to do. Yeah, that's like <laughs> one of my quotes. Like, Hello everybody, today I'm here with Liz and Nolan, who are two of my literal day one friends. Uh, Liz and I, <laughs> yeah, we were roommates the first week of Swab Summer. And so today we are going to be doing a reaction type video, kind of walking you through breaking down day one of Swab Summer and what it looked like when we went through it back in summer of 2018 versus when we trained the swabs this summer with COVID and so kind of the differences there. If you're curious what the Coast Guard Academy even is, check out one of my most recent videos and uh, yeah, let's get into this. All right. In July, 271 incoming freshmen, or SWABs, arrived at the United States Coast Guard Academy, where future yeah, officers prepare to be commissioned into the U.S. Coast Guard. It marked the beginning of SWAB Summer, a challenging seven-week training program that all future cadets are required to complete. Only this year, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, things are very <laughs> different part the so goes on. Okay, so one thing I wanted to talk about was the difference of like the day before swab summer and what that kind of looked like, the drop-off period. So for our summer, like the day before swab summer, I came with my family and they had a bunch of activities going on. You could take a tour through Chase Hall. We had like different lunches. I don't know about you guys, but I went to church on that Sunday before but this year it like was a drive-through drop-off basically um yeah. i was working the baggage claim so <laughs> we were trying to be intimidating i was yelling at kids I... yeah so like when we were swabs you came with like your whole family and went to fifth deck and they checked us in with our company and then we went down and did a bunch of paperwork stuff and then we went down to the gym and then got on the bus they didn't do that this summer. I just remember our Padre banging his hand on the like roof of the bus. Boy, wasted! Zero three! Now get off this bus! Get off! Get off! And then he had bloody knuckles. <laughs> I don't even remember. It's all a blur to me. That's the only thing I remember from the bus. Basically, we what get on this there? bus and it's just like super intimidating. <laughs> Like everyone's like sitting in attention, like what the heck is going on? Cause that's the first time away from your parents really. And like, it's just one-on-one -on -one with like a good cadre. And then they just drive up, like they don't go very far, but they just drive up to Bear Drive um, by the arches. And that's when they like start yelling at you, like get off the bus. Move, 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 move. And you're rushing off the bus with your bag and then you get into the quad. And then that's when they kind of introduce themselves as your cadre. And then you go up to the wing area which is like the hallway where your rooms are and you drop off your stuff just really fast change into gym gear and then you're off to the races and then, and then yeah and so one thing that was also different this summer was the swearing in ceremony so usually after you change and they teach you like basic drill movements and like have like swearing in ceremony on the parade field where the whole class is there lined up in your platoons in uniform and you take a class picture and then you have like 15 final minutes with your parents to like say goodbye so they can see you in your uniform. This summer it was like we kind of said a rolling drop off. You dropped off your stuff, went to fifth deck and then each group had their own individual swearing in ceremony and they weren't in uniform. We've never done this before. As the old adage goes, man plans, fate laughs. So we're making adjustments as necessary. We're charting uncharted waters right now. This whole first squad, get back. Sometimes you don't get to pick the uh, situations you're in. Sometimes the situations pick you. This is their small summer. This is their reality, and this is what they're working through. Yeah. 
After arriving at the academy, all swabs entered a 14-day restriction of movement really period, me, or ROM, and got COVID-19 tests like, before their actual <laughs> training began. 271 students tested them twice uh, in the 14 days that they've been on board. Zero positive tests. Every test has come back negative. <laughs> of 2024, day one of Swab Summer was actually day 15, since their real training began after their two-week quarantine. Yeah, so... That's totally fake. <laughs> so, fake news. Yeah, so, okay. We, they had, like, a restriction of movement period. What's the quarantine period. Basically, we just did the same thing we would have done for regular Swab Summer, but in their rooms. So you just had to get creative with the different tra ways you trained them, like... <laughs> Yeah. But they couldn't leave the room. And so it was tough because usually, like, during our swab summer, I remember going to trainings and it was like a break because you got air conditioning. You weren't with your cadre anymore, so usually a more relaxed environment. I ate a lot of snacks during trainings. But, like, this summer they were just in their rooms all the time. And we as their cadre had to still be there, like, monitoring. And so it was a lot. It was just a lot different this year. But, it's like, yeah, you had to get really creative with the way you did things. Yeah. But nothing, honestly, really changed after that two-week period ended, like, they say like day one was really the like on day 14, but not really because this summer was just very play by ear. We just had to work with what we got as far as COVID stuff. So, yeah. The day begins with a morning meal. Get in line, get your food. Go! But before they can eat, swabs are stopped by members of the cadre, a group of leaders comprised by juniors at the academy. <laughs> Assigned to instruct them during swab summer. You want to take one guess as to what company I'm from? Swabs are asked to identify different members of the cadre, <laughs> which is this what they say was done. Was the, the way the wardroom worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, when we did it, it was like, well, first off, it was like family style. So, like, we all like sat together with like a cadre at both ends of the table, and mm -hmm. then you had to like pass the food around and ask, or there's certain like customs, be able to like stop the food, but. This year, like, it was all like they got it themselves, and so it was a different dynamic. Yeah, it was just different. I think what's going to happen next in the video, Admiral's going to talk about, like, respecting your superiors, basically. And so one thing about Swab Summer, like, really in the big scheme of things, like, these people that are yelling at you, they're only two years older. And Maybe not even. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, some of them are probably older than I was. But, um, like, the big picture in the back of your mind, like, you should be thinking, like, we're all on the same team here. Like, these guys are only two years older than me, but... It does teach you that you have to respect your superiors and respect the chain of command that comes with being in the military. So. Ramping up the stress helps those folks realize that they are in a different environment and they have to align with our values. They have to demonstrate to us that they respect the woman and man staying to their right and staying to their left and the service that in the nation that they're going to serve. Get out of my face! Oh, no. When you're performing the test, you will not be required to wear your mask. After breakfast, the first order of business is the physical I mean, fitness exam, nice. or BFE. <laughs> test will begin in five, four, three. The three-part test exactly. begins I did this today. <laughs> really? Up, yes. down. Conducted at a cadence. Two, down. Look at what I'm doing. Pull your core. That's what I look like. <laughs> this just recently switched it from sit-ups to a plank. I do so much better on it. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. This isn't the same for everyone, but my PFE time coming in and everything about my PFE score coming in was so much worse than it was after Swab Summer. Like, after Swab Summer, it was my best slower. score. But some people, I know that's not the case. I, I got slower because that was a wrong last one. Hmm. So, like, I was in better shape before Swab Summer, personally. I wasn't because I don't run. We didn't run that much. I swap gained summer. weight over Swab Summer. Same. <laughs> I didn't, I'd say the same, but like I got a lot faster just I think because I wasn't really a runner and so mm -hmm. just like the constant always moving of Swab Summer got my cardio a lot better though. <laughs> I was so slow for Swab Summer. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a runner, so. By planks. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah planks, way better than sit ups. Let's go, bro. Yeah. Then, a one and a half right run. Let's go! Let's go! Male swabs stop at the barber shop, and the barbers protect themselves with masks and additional personal protective equipment. In 
disinfect the chairs after each cut. You need situational awareness, Swamp Pop. Oh. <laughs> they walk past you, you should be able to see them in the peripheral vision. If I'm over here and I'm walking, do you not notice that there's a blue blob at the bare minimum? One of the most important pieces of equipment the swabs are issued is a little blue book known as the running light. I still got mine. Keep studying! Uh, <laughs> swabs are expected My running light was destroyed. So during swab summer, you have to keep your running light, which is this book filled with just information that you need to know. You keep it in your sock, in your long white sock. Months. And like, mine was disgusting because it was so sweaty. And at one point it got bloody because of like changing remedials. It might have mold all over it. Yeah, but I mean, I still use it to like to figure out how to steal my room. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Memorize hundreds of facts found in the book and to be quizzed on them at any moment. What is Article 6 of the Code of Conduct? Sir, Article 6 of the Code of Conduct is I will never forget that I'm an American. Everything that you need as a swab is right in that little book and you can fit it in the back of your pocket. Sayings that you're supposed to practice. Uh, the ethos of the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard ethos is I'm the Coast Guardsman. It's just a knowledge book compressed so that you can sit there and read it and learn and uh, develop yourself on your own time. It's a very important tool in Swab Summer. Go! The swabs are issued uniforms. I gotta give you this one too. Including three pairs of shoes, boots, athletic shoes, and Sperry topsiders or boat shoes, which come in handy very soon. Well, Part of Swab right Summer is focused yeah, on seamanship. Right. Not every swab is a this seasoned is, sailor, so friends. they're all taught the basics of boating. This is the boat. And they'll soon get underway on 13-foot sailboats used for training. Okay, so this is waterfront. So there's different types of cadre, right? So these two were Chase Hall cadre. So they were like in the barracks all the time. My main duty as a waterfront cadre was down at the waterfront teaching them how to sail. And so we... I had to give lessons. I think I gave the same lesson like 16 times over and then we would take them out sailing. And so they would come down multiple times and each time we kind of teach them a new lesson and go over some new skills. And so it was cool uh, being able to just be out on the boats all the time in the sun. Yeah, waterfront cadre are a lot more like relaxed and like chill than chase all cadre are. Um, also, one thing that didn't happen this summer that usually happens during swab summer is you spend a week on the tall ship Eagle. And so for us, when we were swabs, we did four weeks of swab summer, then went on Eagle for a whole week and then had two more weeks of swab summer. And we actually, we flew down to Miami. We had a pretty sweet deal. Like we flew down to Miami, had some off time there, which was super fun. Like that's the first time that I like got to know these guys and like got to actually talk to people. And then we sailed from Miami to Virginia and then got some free time there. So it was pretty awesome. Um, and they teach you just like the basics of sailing on tall ship and the way that the crew dynamic works, that sort of stuff. That didn't happen this summer. They just spent one day on Eagle, like right after swap summer. Uh, but then this year's third class, they will spend five, six weeks on it. So they'll get that training this summer. So when our young women and men graduate from the Coast Guard Academy, they will go out and begin service to the nation as officers in the United States Coast Guard. The vast majority of them will go to Coast Guard cutters, literally around the nation and around the globe. Some will go off to flight school and prepare to become pilots. Every single one of them has a job, and every single one of them will start serving day one. Okay, so the rest of this video is actually just talking about the school year and some other stuff about the academy. And so if you want to watch the rest of this video, I'll link it here. Um, but I'm going to end the reaction type part of it here and just ask these guys a few closing questions. So what was your favorite part about Swab Summer, Nolan? A swab? As a swab. Okay. I think my favorite part was <laughs> coach's time. Oh my gosh. So... Uh, every like few days uh, during the sports period, you'll get to go down and like talk to your coach. And so I was recruited for baseball, so I'd go down to the baseball field and hang out with uh, all the baseball cadre and just kind of like get to know them and, and get to see the coach and hang out at the field, and get some snacks because my coach brought them. So that was like a nice break um, in the midst of all of the chaos at Swap Summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my favorite is, my advance is probably a little bit different. Honestly, I liked the craziness of being in Chase Hall and like cotter time and doing like the different types of remedials. I like, I really like change. Like I think it's really fun and exciting. So like coming here, I had no expectations. I didn't even know I was going to yell that. I remember no, day one. No, she had no idea. I was like day one, I was like, 
are they ever gonna stop? But like I thought I was just gonna be like they're yummy for day, now they yelled at me for the whole summer. But I honestly just loved like running around and like doing different remedials and I thought it was so much fun. Like just the chaos of Salt Summer I really, really enjoyed. And I liked also like morning cows a lot. I liked the morning workouts and like getting iced and IT. So that's probably my favorite yeah, part. Of what this a summer. trooper. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, my favorite part was probably getting really close with like our platoon. Uh, we ended up like winning sea trials and like everything. winning swab summer. Everything. We um, wiped so the floor with everybody. We had, a, we, had, we had a lot of pride back then, and so it was just, that was really fun. Um, also, like towards the end of swab summer, the cadre like can be a little bit more fun with you. They can mess around, and we did a lot of like really funny stuff at the end. So it's something to look forward to at the end of swab summer. Hopefully, what was your hardest part or like your worst day? Worst day. I don't think I could pick a specific day, but it you does were, get... You were an average swab. So. I was the most, like, average I don't think they, average. Ever, they ever called him out for anything. They are like, I don't like you. I don't <laughs> hate you. Like, just do better. <laughs> but for me, it was the just the mundaneness of, like, the everyday, like, repetition. Mm -hmm. And I'm somebody that likes to control my own schedule. And so just always being on somebody else's schedule kind of drained me. But got through it. Yeah. I think the hardest part for me, oh yeah, it was like the third day. Um, I think it was 4th of, of July. July. Oh, and I like, remember. <laughs> I didn't, everyone like knows me as this girl. I didn't know what TAPS was or like anything. And I like was really sick. I came to the academy actually like super sick. I think I had the flu or something, I don't know. But I like coughed and then I got ripped a new one. But I remember that night, I was just like, <laughs> I don't really wanna, like I was like, what is this place? Like I just got ripped for coughing. like. But honestly, my cadre like pulled me aside and was like, you can do this, like you're doing really, like you, you got it. And so that kind of like pushed me through the rest of the summer. And it was like that night that I was like, like make a break, like oh, I'm gonna stay here, I guess. It was like the third day, but I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> but that was really tough, but it also made me think about like why I wanted to be here. And so like that, once I like figured that out, it kind of pushed me through the rest of the summer. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know that I have like a hardest day. I'm really close with my family and I, love being with them and so just like the homesickness piece but then again like once I got closer with these guys and like made my new family and made my new friends like things changed and got a lot better so yeah and then do you have any piece of advice like if you had to give one piece of advice for swap summer have fun with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's what I would say piece. because think of it it's like a really cool opportunity to like improve yourself and like get better and yes it's challenging but like in order to grow, like you're gonna have to have pain. So I would say embrace the pain and get gritty and have fun with it. Get gritty. Yeah, that's like <laughs> one of my quotes. Like the whole time I was just, like, when I just felt gross and didn't want to do like another person, I was like, just get gritty. Mm -hmm. My piece of advice would just be to like go all out. Like I was very average over the summer, and my idea or thinking going into it was just like lay low, like just I don't know, fly just fit in and fly under the radar, which like worked, but. Like looking back, I wish I was there, like getting iced, like with all of my shipmates <laughs> and just like going through all of that with them. I think it would have made it a little more fun. And just like looking back, like I wish I was like more involved instead of just trying to like fly under the radar. So I think that I would just say uh, keep the big picture in mind. And like I mentioned earlier, remember that really you're on the same team as your cadre, you're all in the same service, fighting for the same goal. So just keep that in mind and, uh, yeah, like Liz said, like, don't be afraid to have fun with it. And these are memories that you'll have for the rest of your life. And not everyone gets the opportunity to be here. So just really hold that um, in your head going through the entire swap summer. Okay, so I thought it was only fair to ask some current fourth class the same questions that I asked my friends to get you the full information that you need to know for this video. So, Attention, okay. Maddie, what was your favorite part of swap summer? My favorite part of Swamp Summer, probably like the swimming aspect, like the survival at sea. And sailing, that was fun too. When it ended. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part was sea trials. It was really mm -hmm. hard. Like it sucked, but it just felt so good at the end. And then we did those last 24 push-ups. Uh, that was just like the best feeling in the world. When we got up and started hugging each other and everything. My favorite part was going down to waterfront and Going to Vespers, that was always a really good time, and we got to actually meet people from other companies. What is that. Vespers? Vespers, it's like a church service. I think it was on Wednesday nights, and you can go and they give like 
a little prayer and I think there's normally singing during Scott Summer and you get to eat snacks and hang out with people. After I got my teeth, it felt really good just to like have it done. I was like, whoa, I just like did a bunch of push-ups and I survived. What was the hardest part or your worst day? My worst day was probably when I showed up wearing someone else's laundry and it didn't go well. Not great. <laughs> One time at night, my roommate and I went to the bathroom and we forgot our masks. <laughs> Just now. and we got reamed for like an entire day. But um, we got like once the day's over, it's done. So you start new the next day. So it was back to normal. My worst day was probably when I got addressed so many times about keeping my thumbs along my trouser seams that I just stopped writing it on my discrepancy sheet and I felt like I couldn't do anything right. I remember the Saturday that you guys came back, so the day phase one came back, that Saturday, and like, I remember that day, I got iced 11 times. That was the by far. Will you explain what ice is? Yeah, so that <laughs> ice is when like, basically like, I mess up, like say I got a not question wrong or like, I stand in the wrong place or I don't speak loud enough and Mr. Barry will come up and be like, hey, yo, John, like, fall out. And then he makes me do a bunch of push-ups and stuff and, like, uh, planks. And that happened to me 11 times that day. So that was not fun. What is one piece of advice for a future swab? Um, just make sure, like, you think through everything before you speak. Like, don't feel like you have to answer right away. Like, that one, just, like, take a breath and slow down and like have perspective and just like answer. Like don't get too caught up in the moment. Start going to bed earlier because then, because after TAPS, that's at 10 p.m., um, they tell you to go to bed and like you wake up at like five or six every morning, I think like five. Always check your shipmate before you leave your room because I know my roommate Lily saved me like a hundred times because I would have gone out with like my shirt partially untucked or like without having a pen in, in my sock and she saved me on that countless time. I would recommend doing like some sort of like physical stuff before because like for us we kind of had like that weird like break in between where we had that two weeks off and then so when we started actually doing stuff it like it hit me hard because I had had two weeks where I basically didn't do anything in the future, you guys probably won't have like that wrong period. Mm -hmm. So like if you get yourself to like good physical shape before you come, that'll go a long way. Also, it would suck, but like learning the mission before you get there would <laughs> oh, actually yeah. like be so huge. Because like the first two weeks, yeah. all you're doing is going like you go through the mission over and over and over again. And if you know how to do that, you're going to save yourself so much trouble over the summer. Oh yeah, if you went to AIM, um, you get this book we call like the Bowsprit or something. Um, and I studied that before I came. Um, and like a lot of the things that popped up in there were things that we had to learn. Awesome. Well, Liz and Nolan actually just did a devotional on the OCF channel. So if you want to see that, <laughs> check that out. Oh, no. uh, they covered the topic of joy. So go watch that. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.